welcome. Scott here. Here is a quick boss guide for the upcoming Lavinia Plus Heretics event, Supplication for Catastrophe. In JP, the featured units are Sidor from Final Fantasy IV The After Years, Cyan from Final Fantasy VI, Titus from Final Fantasy X and Ignis from Final Fantasy XV. As Ignis is synergy and gotten his C90 awakenings in the previous banner. My guess is that he should be most likely replaced by Bash from Final Fantasy XII. This story event also marks the debut of Cyan LD. Sidor, Cyan, Titus, and Bash will be getting their C90 awakenings. Both Sidor and Titus will get their BT realization. For the fight, we will be fighting two Sahajan Shaman which has 17.5 million HP each. They absorb magic brave attacks. The turn requirement is 80. The HP requirements is 15,000. Before I continue further, here is a small disclaimer clause for the video. The guide is written based on the time that the event was released for the Japanese version. Please do note that it is possible that the boss fight mechanics might differ when the actual event is released in global. Firstly, let's go through the Lavinia Plus Orb conditions. The orb will appear at the start of the fight. It is a non-cancellable orb. The orb will downtick by 2 per action taken by your party. The Lufania Plus Countdown ability is not a fatal orb. Erdgeist's Power Plus is an AoE Brave Plus HP attack, which also delay all targets by one turn. It will cleanse a debuff from itself and grants itself the Blessing buff for 5 turns. The attack will also inflict 2 turn Piscine Poison debuff on all targets. After the Countdown ability is executed, the boss will gain frame turns which will result it to be immune to delay and turn deletion for two turns. As the countdown ability has pretty nasty effects, it is your best interest not to trigger them too often. To uptick the orb, you need to delay holy brave damage. The recommended units are Sidor, Paladin Cecil, Kuja, Ash and Aiko. Having a holy enchanter will help a lot for the fight as the orb have pretty tight downtick restrictions. As the boss absorbs magic, for magic holy units like Kuja, Ash, and Aiko, make sure you inflict the holy imperil debuff so they can override the magic absorption. Now let's proceed with some party setup recommendations. Recommended calls abilities. To ensure that you are able to constantly break them, it is important to inflict defense down debuffs. Example of calls abilities that inflict defense down are Ferris, Titus, Jack, and Vanille. As the boss has a huge amount of HP, HP damage up debuff calls like Karaseme, Gabrin, Ignis, Maria, Lily Set, and Fran are useful. Although a bit trickier to use, horror type HP damage up calls like Sid and Kimari are also viable. A lot of the recent released LD units have accompanied HP damage auras. As the orb requires you to deal holy elemental damage, you can use Ash for 6 turn party holy enchant or Sidor base call for 3 turn self enchant. Next, I will be covering units that will be useful to handle the fight mechanics. Like other Lufania Plus events, it is always recommended to bring supports for their aura and buffs. They are Garnet, Leela, Horum, Setzer, Agrias, Kate Sith, Queen, Ishtala, Bards, Lena, Lyud, and Rosa. A green BT plus Garnet will definitely help to open up a lot of team comp options. If you have her, Leela will probably help a lot for the fight since the boss most dangerous attacks are not guaranteed hit. As the boss can gain tremendous amounts of brave and if you are playing the non-delay game, damage mitigation is highly recommended. Options include Snow, Oren, Gladiolus, Bash, Zack, Kor, Guy, Prompto, Glove, and Cater. We have actually fought these types of Sahajan Shaman before. It was during the Maldoris Night event where Lena LD makes her debut. As the boss absorbs magic, it is advisable to bring non-magic damage dealers. If you want to use magic damage dealers, make sure you have elemental enchant and the boss has elemental imperil debuff. You can consider the following units for your damage dealers, they are Titus, Lock, Noctis, Machina, Chaos, Noel, Jet, Sidor and Jegran. 
as the boss have frame turns and scripted HP attacks at certain thresholds, you can consider bringing trap units like Ace, Virion, Leon, Maria, and Trey. The boss loves to buff themselves a lot so it is important that you dispel them or block them with frame debuffs. As the boss scripted countdown ability will cleanse a debuff, so inflict 8 frame debuff strategy won't work and hence you need to bring a dispeller to remove that annoying blessing buff. Dispellers that you can consider are Cyan, Bald here, Kadutch, Yuffie, Cloud, Ferris, Vanille, Beatrix, Sid Highwind, and Pain. The boss can also inflict nasty debuffs with its attack, so you can consider bring debuff evasion units or a debuff cleanser to handle the debuffs. Other than Lena, for debuff evasion, you can consider bringing Afma, Selfa, Ignis, and Aerith. For debuff cleansing, you can consider bring Sidor, Yuna, Sid Reigns, Mog, Pernalo and Pain. Sid Reigns also have dispel utility. You will notice that some of the units have red borders surrounding them. This is because they have magic attacks in their kit. So if you intend to use them, make sure you enchant them and imperil the boss with the corresponding element so they will be doing weakness damage. On the screen, you will see a timeline showing the HP thresholds triggers that you need to watch out for. The Lufania Aura and Stats boosts are triggered at the start of the fight and 49% HP threshold. The Lufania Plus Orb will trigger at the start of the fight and it is a non-cancellable orb. To uptick the orb, you need to deal holy brave damage. Do note that every action that your party members take, it will down tick down the orb by 2 unless you are dealing holy brave damage. The Sahajan Shaman will power up when they have more buffs. Boss A will always start off with Supplication for Grace where both Sahajan will gain 5 offensive buffs. Dispel them or block them with frame debuffs to reduce their offensive output. At the 79%, 49% and 29% HP thresholds, the boss will use the scripted countdown ability Erdgeist's Power Plus. The attack won't trigger during burst or summon phase but it will be triggered immediately after you have exited the phase. I will talk more about the countdown ability in the subsequent slides. Other than the attack, the countdown ability offers the boss a potent buff, Blessing. It is highly recommended that you dispel it the soonest possible once it gets applied. If you are doing the fight with a holy enchanter, the fight shouldn't be too difficult. You probably only need to worry about the countdown ability that will be triggered at the scripted HP thresholds. Without a holy enchanter, the fight will obviously become a lot tougher. But it is still manageable if you have Leela and a Dispeller. Now let's proceed with the boss mechanics proper. Like the previous Lufania Plus fights, the boss will gain big stats boosts, brave damage, and brave gain reduction auras when you deplete their HP to a certain threshold. The threshold's trigger for this fight is at the start of the fight and 49% HP thresholds. At the start of the fight, it will boost its defense stats by 200%. At 49% HP threshold, it will further boost its defense stats to 300%. The maximum brave damage reduction auras is 50%. The maximum brave gain reduction auras are 80%. To handle against the brave reduction auras, you can use brave damage up calls like Jack, Sephiroth, or bring a support that have brave damage up like Lena. Alternatively, you can also use the enchant and imperil strategy to hit the enemies for elemental weakness damage. The boss will buff themselves with supplication for grace, which grant them a slew of offensive buffs. Under any circumstance, make sure you don't let them buff until they get the fifth buff, Enfeeblement Up. Try to kill both of them at the same time, if not the surviving one will use Supplication of Grace. Now, I will be covering the boss key mechanics in detail. Let's recap on the boss countdown ability, Erdgeist's Power Plus is an AoE Brave plus HP attack, which also delay all targets by one turn. It will cleanse a debuff from itself and grants itself the blessing buff for 5 turns. The attack will also inflict 2 turn Piscine Poison debuff on all targets. Other than the orb tick down to 0, the attack will be scripted to be triggered at the following HP thresholds, 
79%, 49%, and 29%. Make sure you have your damage mitigation up when the attack is triggered. The attack is actually quite harmless if you have damage mitigation but the real issue is the buff blessing and the frame debuff Piscine poison that it inflicts from the attack. The blessing buff, which lasts for 5 turns, increases the boss brave resistance up by 30% and HP damage resistance up by 100%. The boss turn rate will also be doubled. You can see that this is a very potent buff. Even with 8 frame debuffs, the boss will guarantee to get this buff up as the countdown ability will cleanse a debuff so the boss will always have a buff slot for this. The Piscine Poison debuff is quite damaging as the inflicted character will get their speed and turn rates reduced, HP damage dealt reduced by 30% and receive more brave damage by 50%. If you have a debuff evasion unit or debuff cleanser to cleanse the debuff, you should be fine. To handle the aftermath of the attack, it is best to bring a designated debuff cleanser and dispeller. Cedor, a debuff cleanser and Cyan, a dispeller are good options. Ignis is originally synergy for this event and his debuff evasion will help a lot for the party. There are a number of units that can do these two key utilities. They are Bald here, Yuffie, Pain and Sid Reigns. Here are some key pointers to take note of when you are about to trigger the threshold. 1. If you are relying on dispel calls, target to push both bosses HP threshold close to each other so that you can dispel the buff at one swoop. If you have Leela, have a dispel call on her will make this method a lot easier to execute. 2. Avoid using calls to trigger the thresholds. If the called unit received HP damage, you will receive unrecoverable HP damage. The HP requirements for the fight is only a mere 15,000. Other than the countdown ability triggers, in this slide, I have list down the key abilities that you need to watch out when fighting these bosses. As I have already talked about supplication for grace earlier, so I won't go in depth on it too much. You will know it is coming when the boss is target all with a brown background. Other than the countdown ability, you need to watch out for these two key HP attacks. The non-plus variant of the countdown ability, Erdgeist power is an AoE Brave plus HP. The attack has a very potent max Brave down debuff. Multi Skewer is a single Brave plus HP attack. It will most likely instantly KO a broken target. The occurrence of the boss using it is higher after its HP drop to below 50%. So do watch out for it. I have a table listing down the boss's key attacks. You will notice a trend. The more buffs that the boss have, the more dangerous they become. So weaken them by blocking their buff slots with frame debuffs or dispel their buffs as soon as the boss puts them up. Here is the last slide for my boss guide presentation. Even the boss has a massive pool HP, you might still be able to nuke the boss HP down pretty fast with the recent green BT units before even it poses a threat. 1. Brave control is important here if you allow gain too much brave you could end up having the problem unable to shave them. Debuffs that nullifies brave gains are very useful here. You can consider using Setzer, Arcela, Yuffie, Edward, or Cater. 2. The boss has a couple of nasty debuffs. You can ignore the mechanic by bringing debuff evasion unit like Lena, Ignis, or Selfie. Or you can cleanse the debuffs with a debuff cleanser like Sidor, Yuna, Pain, and Jelkat. 3. Sahajan Shaman will get more dangerous when they have more buffs. The blessing buff that the boss gotten from its countdown ability has pretty nasty effects, so it is your best interest to dispel them before they pose too big of a problem. I have list down the list of dispellers that you can consider to bring for the fight. Lastly, the boss absorbs magic. If you are using magic units, remember to upkeep the elemental imperil debuffs otherwise the magic brave damage will get absorbed. The fight will be significant easier if you have party wide holy enchant. You can do this easily by bring a party holy enchanter like Sidor or Aiko. Alternatively, you can consider using Ash LDCA for party holy enchant call. But the call aura will only last for 6 turns. I have come to the end of my boss guide presentation. 
Hopefully you find it useful. If you like the video, please give a like. Please subscribe to my channel for future gaming content. Good luck for the fight tomorrow. Bye.